Well, join us now is another doctor, and he actually comes all the way from Montreal and Cairo and Switzerland, and it's Dr. Ibrahim Karim. Thanks so much for joining us today on the program. Well, it's my pleasure being uh, with you here. You've traveled some, some ways to come here and be on the program today, so we thank yeah, you for yes, taking the time. Yes, we came from Montreal, yes. Yeah. This, this time is not that far off, <laughs> Yeah. except for the temperature. <laughs> Absolutely. A little bit different, right? <laughs> Minus 15 degrees yeah. centigrade. You actually have family here in Southern California, so you've my, kind of made it son, a trip. Uh, my son lives here. He has a tennis academy here. Great. And... Uh, so we can see our grandchildren from time to time. Great way to enjoy, uh, enjoy the holidays this yes. year, family. And then obviously we're going to talk today about biogeometry. Biogeometry. Yes. Biogeometry. So yes. let's talk a little bit about that. Tell us what exactly is that? Well, biogeometry is a relatively new science. For relative new, that means it's, I've been doing it for 45 years now. But uh, it's, to put it in a nutshell like that, it's a way of using the energy of geometrical shapes mm -hmm. to induce harmony in energy quality of the environment. So it can be, it's based uh, on an, a new paradigm, which is the physics of quality, mm -hmm. because all modern science is quantitative. But n nobody has a physics or a science of qualities. Qualities means how things affect the human being. Mm -hmm. So when you take quality into consideration, the physics of quality, all of a sudden, every effect is a form of energy. Your feelings are a form of energy. You can do with qualities what you can do with quantities. So it's a generally applicable in all fields of life. There's no field of life where you cannot apply by geometry to harmonize the energy quality in that field. Right. Yeah. And as we progress, uh, mankind is introducing more energy into the environment and obviously then into our structures. So then that changes all the time then, doesn't it? Well, we have a problem actually in modern civilization. Yeah. You know, uh, we're in the age of information. Our main information is carried on carrier waves, electromagnetic mm -hmm. carrier waves. And these are like a hidden time bomb in the age of information. Sooner or later, the atmosphere will be so saturated that immune systems of all life will collapse. Mm. So we have to find a new paradigm. You know, until now, when you find any kind of pollution, the normal logical way of thinking is to reduce it. But when you have electromagnetic pollution in the age of information that you, we are consciously increasing every day hundredfold, mm -hmm. the paradigm seems not to work anymore. So what right. do we have to do? We, besides trying to reduce it, we're always introducing new sources, so you have to go in there and change its quality, right. change how it affects humanity. That's the only way. If you can transform it into something that has a positive healing effect on uh, your emotions, on your mental state, on your vitality and all that, you're home free. You right. save our civilization. Otherwise, it goes down. Now, I believe you call it electrosensitivity, so people are obviously sensitive to these airwaves and electro issues, I guess, on a daily basis, but I might be affected totally different than you might be affected, even though we're sitting in the same room. Of course, the, the way you're affected depends on many things. Uh, it depends, for example, how much metal you have in your body. If you have amalgam in your teeth, you're mm -hmm. affected a bit more. It depends a bit on your diet. It depends on uh, how you use... Uh, if you're old uh, every day in front of your computer for so many hours or with your cell phone, you, you get more electrosensitive with time, you see. But in general, everybody is affected more or less by electromagnetic radiation. So whether it's a plant, an animal, or a human being, mm -hmm. there is a lot of stress on the life force from electromagnetic radiation. And we can, you see, we do not go the way in trying to prove uh, how bad it is. I mean, many researchers are doing that. That's not my field. Mm -hmm. My field is to go somewhere, change the whole energy of the place, and then you can decide for yourselves what happens when 60% of all your health symptoms of animal plants and, and human beings right. are reduced so much, then you, can, you really understand uh, the amount of electromagnetic stress that the human being is subjected to in the age of information. Mm -hmm. You can only know it if you experience it. So for, in the studio here, for example, you work every day in your studio. You, you, you don't 
it, it's your life, finish. Right. Whatever you feel, if you don't sleep well, if, or mm -hmm. whatever's in your health, if you're agitated or whatever, uh, if you're nervous, if you're depressed, or all those things, if ser serotonin level in your brain is low, and, and all those things, these are normal. You say these are things, in our civilization, these are normal things. Right. But if I put a geometrical shape in this room, and then all of a sudden, something happens, and you're in a state that you've never seen before, because you've never... You've never experienced it. Never experienced right. it. So all of a sudden, something is strange. Some people feel it cannot be true. That's why many people have difficulty believing in biogeometry, you know. First of all, the idea of a geometrical shape emitting energy, the energy of geometrical shapes is free energy. See, it doesn't cost you anything, it's free right. energy. Yeah. So the idea that you can harness free energy, and not only quantitatively, but you can actually harness quality. So you're taking quality, you're storing it, enhancing it, and emitting it. Mm -hmm. This is a completely new paradigm that mm -hmm. can change any aspect of your life. You can use it wherever you, you want. I believe you developed it. It's, it's a cube, correct? Well, a cube is one of the things. Uh -huh. one of them. It depends where, where, if I'm working on agriculture, on your food, or on animal uh -huh. farming. Mm -hmm. uh, I use different things. It depends where. Depends on what the issue might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it depends what's more practical in uh, in the environment. I yeah. mean. Our good friend Rob Merritt sat in this seat for 40 years, and whenever we were working, he'd always say, we're getting video poisoning because <laughs> yes. you know, we're sitting so close to all this equipment, you know, eight hours a day. Yes. He's joking, but in a way, he's no, not no, because uh, of that. I mean, if, if I, I leave one of my cubes here in the studio, mm -hmm. uh, not only that you will feel different, but there are some things that will happen that you wouldn't even believe. For example, the people watching the show in their homes will be affected by this harmonizing energy aspect uh -huh. going into their homes through your program, you see. Mm. And uh, well, we could use that. Yeah, well, I, I won't tell you a secret, you know. I do lots of television programs in the Middle East, yeah. and I always do that, you know. I always put something in, in the studio, and then, uh, unfortunately, now I don't have something with me, but I, did, I used to do that in, yeah. in all my television programs. And people would sometimes sit and just watch and even if they don't really concentrate on or, or understand what yeah. I'm saying, they're just sitting there enjoying it, you know. Right. And some people come, and if they have a troubled area in their body, they put it against the screen, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and things like that. It's very yeah. funny, actually. But it, it's, it's the way it's, I mean, we need to change the energy quality right. to make it work for us. Mm -hmm. Because, look, we put on the air, we put pictures, okay? We put our voice, put music, you can put everything on the air, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we just put something that will turn electromagnetic radiation into something healthy? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the next logical step, you know, but right. we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. And we have to do it, otherwise, uh, the end, we'll watch the end on television. Right, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Now, you had actually done this kind of research and it actually was successful in a town you had done in Switzerland, I believe, in Hamburg. Yes. And I believe, was it a cell tower that they had in the middle of the village that was radiating and people were becoming ill and well, the cell wasn't tower, going well? Let's say the cell tower was the last thing that, that oh, triggered okay. the whole thing. Right. They, uh, uh, a cell tower was put inside the church tower. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, they didn't mind because uh, they said the cell tower being inside the church tower is, uh, will not affect the, the, the landscape, you, you know, because it's a tourist area. You right. don't want to have cell towers, so being hidden in the church, mm -hmm. it was okay. But when things started going bad, they started saying, why do we put uh, modern technology into our church? Because people didn't go into the church anymore because they had headaches. Right. And <clears throat> Uh, the town of Hamburg, uh, it, it's the people were getting so many symptoms. They were getting sick. Cows were getting stillbirths. Many children had epilepsy. Uh, you know, on the psychological part, people would tell you things that in the beginning we felt, well, this happens to everybody, you know, we didn't take it that serious. But when those things disappeared, when we put by jump, we took, start taking it serious. For right. example, mm -hmm. somebody would say, I'm not happy with my life. But he doesn't know why. Well, why aren't you happy? Do you have many problems? No, 
you have work problem. No, everything is perfect. I mean, but then he says, "I'm not happy," uh, or someone says, "I have no will," mm -hmm. or things like that, or uh, the, "I can't stand my partners." We're just getting at each other. I can't stand my children. So we said, "Well, everybody's like that." They said, "No, no, no. Th th this has to do with the environment." They kept insisting. Mm -hmm. So I told them, "Okay." We had a medical team doing the evaluation, and they evaluated the health symptoms of the people, the stillbirths of the cows, things like that. Mm -hmm. For example, when we put our solution, uh, all epilepsy cases in the whole region, the seizures stopped instantaneously. Mm. When we went once, six, seven years later, to take off the things, clean them, put them back, and all that, in the three days of maintenance, the, the kids started getting epilepsy again after 10 years. You know, you know new kids were getting epilepsy and things mm -hmm. like that. Or when they traveled outside the region, then they got their epileptic fits that they never had inside the region. Right. So yeah. we gave them some form of medallions or things to wear so that when they go outside, mm -hmm. they're not affected. The whole thing was, I mean, the Swiss government uh, was facing actually a revolution there because the people said everything is so bad our health our economy everything is going so bad we're going to dynamite the towers in the region mm -hmm. if you don't do if you don't take them away right. now you can't take one town after another off the grid so the government contacted me i was working on projects in the middle east uh, and they contacted me and said come and see what you can do there mm -hmm. the first thing it was before I went already, many people in the newspapers were against me because they were saying, it's the government scam. How can you say we're restoring the health in the whole area if you don't take away the sources? Mm -hmm. It's not logic. Mm -hmm. So, but they told them, that's what this guy does from Egypt. Well, actually I have my PhD, everything from Switzerland. So they told mm -hmm. him that he's one of our scientists. So give him a chance, <laughs> he, he'll do it. Right. Now. We'd, it took us about six, seven days to install our things there. And uh, afterwards, s everything changed so drastically. Even migrating birds that had gone away came back. New mm. species came back. The whole thing changed. They called that the miracle of Hamburg. Right. And after that, of course, I started getting new projects in Swiss and other towns and all that. Then it led to actually the negotiation uh, to do the whole country which for uh, reasons we, we didn't continue with that one at right. the end yeah maybe we'll talk to you about that the next time maybe maybe next time <laughs> we'll talk about that one well yes. we want to be sure and tell everyone to uh, check out your book and this is the the book and you can actually go to his website as well as you can tell there on the screen and that's uh, back to a future for mankind and it is uh, there is the website biogemetry Dot com and it, this is based on ancient Egypt and uh, you actually your father was very uh, involved in your discovery and your knowledge base as you started to progress in this topic and uh, you can actually pick up this book here at amazon.com you're going to be having another book that you're going to be writing and it's publishing. called by signatures okay and these are just diagrams that we have on medallions uh, you can wear on the body or on a ring like the mm -hmm. ring I'm wearing and when you put that uh, on your body, they enter into resonance with the organ energy. Right. It's like the Chinese meridians on the body, but these are the energy paths inside the organs. Right. And through this resonance, they balance uh, the organs. So actually they are a support mm -hmm. to all kinds of uh, healthy life. They, they support any activity that you do towards your health. They are supported when the organ energy is uh, balanced. Well, very interesting. We appreciate you coming and visiting us today on the program. Enjoy your stay here in Southern California. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And the much. next time you're in town to see your son, uh, be sure and stop by and say hello. Well, thank you very much for having me. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. That's Dr. Okay. Ibrahim Karim. And uh, we do urge you to give uh, this book a, call, a look. And this is called Back to a Future for Mankind. And as we mentioned, you can pick it up on Amazon.com as well. We're going to be right back with more of our program right after this.